Well, then Bob, why should I have the baptism of the Holy Ghost since I don't understand that jibber-jabber? Why in the world should I speak in tongues? What, what good does it do? Well, the Bible says after you get the Holy Ghost, pray that you get the understanding, the interpretation. Pray that you understand what you're saying in your spirit to God. I could be praying right now for my son Tony that's in jail. And I could pray in my natural. But I, if I'm praying in my spirit, I'm going to get directly to God. Amen. Because there's a lot of things when you're praying in the natural that will interfere. You're wondering if God heard it. You're wondering why this and that and so forth. And your mind is cluttered with all this stuff that goes on in, the, in our world today. Well then, what is this language? There's two different kinds of Holy Ghost languages. There's a prayer language that you personally have between you and God. And then there's other tongues where you can be ministering all over the world to people. I remember a Saturday night service in Delaware. And I brought a friend of mine after probably a year and a half of him mocking me and making fun of me, but seeing and hearing things. And I talk every time I tell him about something that happened. His brother was hit with cancer and was dying. So one Saturday night, he decides to go over in Greenville, Ohio, which he lived in line, pick up his brother, get his girlfriend and his wife, and bring them to church on a Saturday night. I remember him coming down to the altar and Rev called him out and praying for him, and he fell out under the power. And I was so thrilled because I was an instrument that was used in the hands of God to use testimony after testimony that caused my doubting friend to start believing and then had enough faith to go get his brother and come and see that. Amen. So I started crying, and while I was crying, the Holy Ghost came upon me, and I started speaking in tongues. And all of a sudden, Rev started interpreting the message. And then he stopped. And there was this guy that was a police officer from Cleveland, Ohio. You might remember this, you that was up there. He came into a service one time in shorts and a t-shirt. And Rev called him out and told him, he said, I see you in a uniform. You're a police officer. And it freaked this guy out. <laughs> This guy happened to know what I was saying because it was a Russian language and he interpreted the language. And he even told Rev, he said, he's speaking in Russian. I can't speak good English. I don't know what I was saying, but God did. And God was ministered to somebody in that church. Rudy and I, after I had the baptism of the Holy Ghost and spoken, several languages and we had several interpreted spoke in tongues for 36 hours i couldn't speak english couldn't shut up we go to a tent revival i thought i was going to play a leroy jenkins there was a man sitting down there in a wheelchair and i remember Rev saying that him and another assistant pastor or manager had prayed for a man that was in a wheelchair and he went up and told the man, he said, I'm going to pray for you. God's going to heal you. And he said, I don't believe that. He said, well, I'm going to pray for you anyhow. And he cut the, the guy cussed. His wife said, shut up. Rev slapped hands on him. He said, now, you either get up or we're going to drag your kneecaps off. The man just stood there, so they grabbed him, jerked him out of the wheelchair and started dragging him. And they, they, he knew that they weren't going to quit dragging, so finally his feet caught hold and went like this, and all of a sudden he took off flying. Yes. So I figured if God did it for Rev, why not me? I was bold enough to try it. If he didn't heal, that's not me. I'm not the healer anyway. So Rudy and I go up there, and I slap hands on my tail, and I really had to interpret the message because they're all Spanish, but one girl, she flew out of that town when she seen this happen. I said, we're going to pray for you and God's going to heal you. And if not, I'm going to jerk you out of that wheelchair and drive, uh, drive your kneecaps off. So Rudy tells him that. We jerked him out of there and we started pulling him. And buddy, his, his legs got a hold of before he took off. It made that preacher so mad. Because here's two strangers coming into a tent. And he's been preaching to these Mexicans for, I don't know, a week or whatever it was. And here's two strangers come in and jerk a man out of a wheelchair and he takes off running. 
Well, I don't know, it's two years later, sitting in the church. Rudy says, Bob, what? He said, who, you know who that is? No, it's a bunch of Mexicans coming in the back door, we're walking down, heading toward the bleacher area. He said, you don't know who that is? He said, no. He says, that's that guy we jerked out of the wheelchair. God had totally healed him and put that man back on his feet. And I didn't even recognize him. So when you have the Holy Ghost and you have boldness, by the way, if you ever pray for boldness, you better get ready, Don. When you pray for boldness and you don't, and God leads you and you lay hands upon somebody and you pray and they don't get healed immediately, doesn't mean the healing is not on its way. Amen. Some people get healed as they went. And you do pray for that individual, and that individual does get healed, blessed, saved, delivered, or whatever it might be, the issue might be. And you turn around, and later on, you recognize what God did for you. It makes you feel good that God used you. Thank you. Amen. Has God ever used anybody in here at all? Amen. Are you sure that He used you? Yeah. It wasn't you using yourself? No. So if God used you, did that make you feel necessary for the kingdom of God. Every one of you have a part in the kingdom of God. Every one of you. Even you that are new here. But you have to get more of God in order to do something for God. Bigger. The bigger your God is, the smaller the problem. Well, how big is your God? Well, you don't realize that I'm going to lose my job. What am I going to do? I'm going to lose my home. I'm going to lose my car. Is God bigger than your home and your car and your job? Well, they're going to take everything I hold away. <laughs> if they did, that's a blessing. You won't have to drag it around in a U-Haul truck. <laughs> Some things is good to get rid of. Yeah. I had somebody text me a message. They said for 18 years they've been looking for their mate, soulmate. And I turn around and I text them back and I said, Jesus is that mate. He will be your everything. I said, when the time's right, God will open up the door and bring that in your life. I remember people begging God to have a baby. And that's fine if you want the responsibility of a baby, but if God doesn't want you to have that baby and you continue to pursue it, you don't know the future of that baby. You don't know if that baby's going to be deformed. You don't know if that baby's going to be... Uh, uh, Cain and Abel tie, good and bad. You don't know. But you've made up your mind you're going to have one. And see, there are some things you put in the care of God. God, if this is what you desire for me, I put this in your hands and I thank you, Lord. And every day thank Him that whatever it was you prayed for is going to pass. Don't sit there and beg God over and over and over for something because He already knows the future. We all know that He's the one that made our future. He's got something planned for everybody in here this year. Amen. There are some people in here that's going to have untold wealth come to them. Mm -hmm. Might be somebody that's passing on that's left you in the will. You don't know. Amen. He said, The eye has not seen, the ears not heard. What's the rest of it? The thing. The thing. That God has in store. You don't know what things it is. That's right. You don't know the day that God has in store for you to be blessed. You don't know what God has for you in the next five minutes. You take a journey by faith. All the gifts that God has put in the church is for a reason to edify, to exhort, to build up, to comfort. It's there for you. Why wouldn't you want to be part of the body of Christ that can be an edification to somebody that comes in the church? Amen. Why would you not want to stand in the gap for somebody and you'd be praying in tongues and what you're actually, your mind is thinking you're praying for this and your spirit's praying for that individual. You don't know. That's why the Bible says, unknown. Amen. 
unknown tongues. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto a man, but unto God, how be it in the Spirit. And God's what? A Spirit. So you're in the Spirit with Him. You're two in the one. In the Holy Ghost, you speak in other tongues, you speak to God and you're in the Spirit. You have the healing gift. You have the miracle gift. You have an interpretation and discernment. You have a knowledge and a wisdom, a faith. And these gifts are all open to you. It says they're, they're given to you severally as He wills. Hey, he'll give you the gifts so that you can be an inspiration and a help to build the body and the, and the kingdom. Thank you. Amen. And when you have these gifts, they're not to make you boastful, make you feel proud. I'm, I'm, I'm not proud that I can pray for the sick. I'm just grateful that I can. I'm grateful if I need somebody to pray for me, i got somebody out here that believes like I believe so I can come together with two or three and, and believe God. Amen. That would make you a, a hot shot either. That's right. We're supposed to come together in love, helping one another. Help Amen. is another. Amen. The gifts of help. 